Hello, everyone. This is uh, Kyle Othmer here from Myovision Technologies. Um, today, we are going to be presenting on behalf of Pathmaster, our multimodal detection solution. Um, I'm hopeful everyone can hear me and everyone's logged in. I was just going to give everyone, maybe I'm uh, just going to start in about two more minutes just to allow a few more people to uh, to trickle in. Um, as you can see, there is a, there is a chat box. Um, Feel free if, if you are having any issues um, logging in or if you have any questions throughout the presentation, uh, please just feel free to enter them in the chat box. Um, so yeah, I'll give us uh, another two minutes and at 11.03, I'll, I'll get started. Okay, here we go. Um, let's get started, everyone. And thank you all for attending today's webinar. Um, thank you, Heidi from Pathmaster for sending this invitation to everyone and, and MyoVision for also coordinating it. Coordinating it. Um, let's get started. So first, I uh, just wanted to give you guys a little bit of information about who, who MyoVision is and where we're from. Uh, we're based in a city called Kitchener, Ontario, uh, no, most notably considered uh, or known as the Silicon Valley of the North. Um, in, in our home region, we host the University of Waterloo. It's one of the top end uh, computer software uh, engineering universities across within North America. Um, we actually reside in a building called the Catalyst Building, which is the world's largest Internet of Things manufacturing space. Um, so basically, it's a accumulation of multiple um, companies, some being mature, some being startup, uh, that are all hyper focused on, you know, new age technologies and most predominantly the building of those technologies and, um, and the associated uh, computing chips. Um, so yeah, we, we do have an array of startup companies that that do reside in our in our manufacturing facility or our building. Um, currently, we're working in 66 unique uh, countries across the world. We have done business with all 50 states um, within the United States, and we also have a European office in Cologne, Germany. Uh, if you see here on the right, that's an image of our insider business, uh, our building. We used to actually it used to actually be a shoe factory, but we've renovated it. Uh, new age. It's it's quite the it's quite the facility. We're we're very proud of it. Um, recently, MyoVision has closed a Series C funding with a large telco here in Canada called Telus, um, and that funding round raised us about 120 million. That was done at the end of 2019. Just for the audience here, uh, coming from Penn uh, and as well as Ohio, we just wanted to uh, reference that we are fully approved on ODOT's tap list as well as Bulletin 15 for PennDOT, uh, for both the detection and smart link product. Um, Pathmaster Inc. is MyoVision's distribution uh, wing. 
within um, Twinsburg, covering distribution for Ohio, um, as well as Penn, as well as Kentucky, uh, West Virginia, um, of the MyoVision ITS products. So where, where MyoVision came from was the Scout portable data collection product. As you can see here, an image on the right, a uh, camera mounted on a telescoping pole. Uh, this telescoping pole goes about 20 feet high up in the air and has been used to count vehicles at over half the intersections in North America. Um, basically, we were with kind of our data and analytics, MyoVision has counted about 60% of uh, the network within North America using this product here, the, the Scout data collection product, 7 billion vehicles to date. Um, and yeah, we're, we're quite proud of that product. And th this product actually gave customers the ability so you would rec record a, a raw recording at the intersection, bring that re uh, recording back to your office, upload it to MyoVision, and we would use our in-house analytical software to, to process it. Um, today, we're actually talking about bringing that technology to the roadside, which is what we have done, um, which is our traffic link product, which I'm going to go into a little bit more uh, detail as well. Um, my vision thinks about smart intersections kind of in three pillars. Um, one being it's critical to have open architecture, an open, open ecosystem approach, meaning you can share cross-departmental and the smartphone model. Um, so within our open architecture, we build compatibility and we don't necessarily lock vendors in. So no vendor lock-in. Um, we also ensure easy integrations with other hardware and software um, platforms that you guys are currently operating with. In regards to an open, eco open ecosystem, we provide tools that engage the full ecosystem, um, meaning police, fire, you know, safety, traffic engineering, public, um, the, the citizens within your community, the mayor's office, um, we, we basically want to be able to share that data set easily and also work with the tools that other, those other departments are leveraging. Data sharing tools, uh, again, we make it easy to share that amongst departments. When it comes to the smartphone model, um, again, we've built a very robust piece of hardware that goes into your cabinet in, in a permanent standpoint. Um, one set of hardware that provides many solutions by activating different applications. This also allows for kind of a future-proof investment on the city level, which I'll go into a little bit more uh, later in the presentation. So let's get into kind of the guts of, uh, of, of our equipment and, and how our equipment um, is leveraged at the intersection. So it starts, uh, as you can see, with the unit on the left called the MyoVision SmartLink unit. Basically what I like to classify this as is, is a data aggregation device. So basically this is aggregating, pulling all speeds and feeds from the cabinet and storing them on this device and then sending them to the cloud. Um, in regards to the actual components of the MyVision Smart Link, it has a GPS time sync. So it will time sync your controllers to ensure that they don't go out of drift or they don't drift. It will also provide a 4G LTE modem. Um, this is a fantastic, feature set allowing for either um, redundant communications where your current comms are failing. Um, it's also just a standalone fantastic communications platform that allows for integration with your current central management system. Um, we, we have partnerships with Verizon in the United States. And uh, yeah, the, the, the device also has a battery backup built into it. So if your intersection were to completely power down, there's an additional piece of power backup in there to kind of notify you that the intersection's down and, and non-operational. Um, it also has a travel time probe built into this device as well, allowing for travel time data sets. As I move on, uh, we do have a ruggedized antenna. This is actually uh, where the uh, travel time Wi-Fi MAC address sniffer uh, resides um, for point-to-point -point travel time that also allows for uh, 4G LTE communications. Just moving on to the device in the middle, which is our 360 camera. Uh, this generates video for monitoring detection and analytics. Um, there is no blind spot in this camera like you may see with other with, with our competitor. Um, we have a full 360 view of, with this camera and it's fantastic for kind of a single camera deployment. 
If I move on to the right, that's identifying the MyVision Smart Sense product. This is the brain power within within our um, device. So it actually resides uh, two NVIDIA TX2 computing chips. Right now, we're only leveraging one of those computing chips. We've built this device to have enough um, brain power to kind of allow for us to continuously uh, build applications on top of the device. Some of those applications may be uh, near miss or some of those advanced safety analytics. Again, we've built enough computing power in the device to allow for that future growth um, and, uh, and enhancements. Lastly, all of this data set that's pulling off of the, all these data sets and nodes that are coming off of these devices need to be stored somewhere. So MyoVision has actually introduced what we call the Traffic Link Portal, which is a cloud-based uh, software suite um, for the traffic operations and, and other cross-departmental operations to access. Integration with all controllers, controller types, and third-party central management systems is possible with this device. Currently, MyoVision is integrated with Econolite, Centrax, Tropicware, ATMS.now, McCain, Transparity, Siemens Tactics, and Intellite Max View. Um, so yeah, the product is definitely interoperable, and it was, it's going to work with, uh, with kind of any NEMA standard uh, cabinet and controller. So let me just keep going. Uh, I've got my eye on the questions here, anyone? There's no questions yet, so, so thank you. Um, let, me, let me just keep going here. So yeah, we're talking about uh, detection and counts today and our ability to detect an object, count it, and process it. Um, so let me start by kind of identifying how we teach a computer to see in our core computer vision. Uh, this is an actual intersection in our largest city in Ontario, the city of Toronto, as you see across, that's the, um, that's the massive train station. This is along Bay Street. This is one of the busiest corridors uh, pre-pandemic. I always have to throw that asterisk in there. Uh, but one of the busiest corridors within the city of Toronto, you can see a massive amount of daily commuters. Um, so the morning peaks, the lunch peaks, and the afternoon peaks were massively important to understand uh, how many volume, how many volume of people and bikes were traveling through this corridor. We installed on this corridor in the city of Toronto because the city of Toronto was actually um, exploring the opportunity to close this street to only allow for ride share and transit to, to go up and down the, uh, the west and east um, ends of Bay. So this data set gave the traffic engineering core group enough power and political power to, to take it to council and promote that, yeah, vehicles, daily commuter vehicles outside of ride share and transit should not be commuting down this corridor. Um, and the end results were they actually closed the corridor and they're getting fantastic results and citizen engagement um, for those daily commuters, making it safer and more multimodal user friendly to travel to and from work. Um, so yeah, as you guys know, we've been in the business for you know close to 14 years. We've counted upwards of 9 billion vehicles, 1 billion pedestrians and bicyclists. And with that massive uh, corpus of data, we were able to really train our computer vision to, to work at the best of its capability. And it's still getting better. So currently right now, we've launched our model 8.7.0 of detection. Um, and we actually have the ability to do stop car, advanced pulse, vehicle plus bike plus pedestrians, 100 zones and nine approach views for detection. When it comes to counting, MyVision collects traffic data on a 24 seven standpoint. Um, so it's a true multimodal turning movement count lane by lane other detection devices will kind of will will at times call out. We do a turning movement count. Well, the when, when you put your thumb down on it and you actually look at it, they're actually just tabulating your detection zones and how many times those detection zones are triggering in a specific lane. Therefore, coming up with a theory of what a TMC is at the intersection. MyoVision actually tracks and traces, as you can see, um, vehicles through. The intersection, giving us the ability to have a true, you know, 16 plus movement uh, turning movement count. 
At the bottom of this screen, on the bottom left here, you'll see how Myovision actually uh, pinpoints characteristics of a vehicle, whether that be headlights, axles, windows, um, length of vehicles, width of vehicles. This allows us to kind of, in real time, uh, at, at the edge, identify what the classification of that vehicle is, meaning is it a single unit, articulated, a bus, a light, a ped, or a bike? We have that capability. Um, and yeah, we really pride ourselves on our on that ability outside of our competition. Um, we see ourselves as the, as the best in the market for both detection and the ability to count in real time at the intersection. Um, one thing I, I uh, wanted to mention as well, MyoVision is partnered with AWS, um, Amazon servers and cloud to allow us to indefinitely store this data set in the cloud. So again, back to the Toronto use case, this was a two year long project since the day they plugged that device in, they were able to historically backtrack to understand trend analysis and, and the, differenti the, the differences between um, seasonal volumes, uh, time of day volumes, and really have that uh, multi-year view. Um, the ability to go back in time was, was extremely important for, for the City of Toronto and many of our accounts. Just gonna keep, uh, keep going here, just to give you guys a quick view of teaching a computer to see. So when MyoVision sees a busy street, how does it pick things up uh, within the street? What is the camera seeing and what is it blocking out? Um, so again, we were able to count the number of vehicles that we see in the screen, the number of pedestrians that we can see in real time. Um, and again, MyoVision doesn't, you know, pixelate an image like you will see other com competitors. You'll see a pixelated image and they leverage what they call background subtraction. And based on that size of the pixelation, they can actually identify a vehicle. Um, again, just back to this original slide, MyoVision's leveraging characteristics of a vehicle um, as well as sizes of a vehicle and also leveraging our massive corpus of, of historical data to understand what a vehicle is. Um, again, that really separates us from, from, uh, from competitors when it comes to the actual computer vision technology that we're leveraging. So when it comes to, again, the classifications, we use cluster visualization and analysis. This again is machine learning, translating an image into a physical aspect through cluster analysis. Um, it allows us to pinpoint, again, the characteristics of an object. It's not only based on size and pixels and background subtraction, we are also identifying unique characteristics of an object. As you can see here, cars are identified in blue and the background, uh, as you can see, is blending with the dark orange. Again, allowing us to differentiate that characteristics of the vehicle. So noting this is a car. Just to kind of identify um, how we identify a model and an object within a configuration zone, as well as the algorithm that determines things like presence, lane assignment, um, and tracking. So data is key for modeling in our, in our perspective. Um, our model understands what is out there, understands the possibility of the objects, and the algorithm determines the presence. As you can see, we're identifying a pedestrian here in the middle of the crosswalk and a pedestrian at the beginning of the crosswalk. This allows us to understand if that pedestrian is clearing that crosswalk in enough time to be a safe user getting through its crosswalk. As you can see here, this vehicle, half of the vehicle is outside of the detection zone, meaning we only captured half of it. But again, we're identifying the actual characteristics of that light vehicle. And we're also triggering that detection zone and separating the lane. Moving forward, uh, again, some of the challenges that we see in, in the North here in Canada, as well as you know, the Great Lakes and, and the Ohio, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania territory is you know, unique, unique um, weather scenarios where it rains hard, snows hard, uh, you get fog buildup, you get icicles on, on the camera lens, uh, you get snow on the laneways. Um, again, I just want to identify our traffic AI uses deep neural networks to see, to see that. Um, it is also constantly learning and improving in these conditions. 
Um, we have a built-in heated camera for our camera to actually, you know, melt off um, any ice buildup or snow buildup, keeping the, the lens clear. Um, glare, we have technologies built in for, for, um, for avoiding the, the, the challenges of glare. And overall, we're seeing this device, you know, quite successful in, in northern Ontario or northern Canada, where it's very, very cold climates, as well as places like Arizona and, and California, where, you know, we, we hit very high um, heat temperatures. We're, we're, we're seeing very, very positive results across the board. Just a great slide to just kind of identify all the things that we are doing with, with one camera, one solution at the intersection. Um, I just wanted to also bring up um, the the installation quickly. Um, one camera, one device in the cabinet. You're typically looking at about a half day setup, max a bucket truck to allow you to deploy the camera. And it's a very good out of box experience. We provide all the, the correct extensions, the mounts um, in conjunction with Pathmaster, extremely helpful for boots on the ground and supporting installations, supporting setups. Um, so the out-of-the-box solution is, is very, very easy. And again, we're more than happy to support it. Um, if I just kind of take a, a 360 view of, of this slide here, it starts with video detection and the ability to improve traffic control with full actuation. Again, we, we map out all of the detection zones. And again, these can all be done remotely. Another big advantage of MyoVision is you can log into our platform from the comfort of your desk and create configuration zones. You don't have to do it roadside with a laptop. Um, and again, MyoVision and Pathmaster will support all of that, um, that setup and, and process in the early stages. When we talk through complete streets, we're talking about our ability to build a platform that allows, that, that speaks to the pedestrians and bicyclists traveling through your network. Very critical to MyoVision. Um, MyoVision introduced a feature set called Pedestrian Compliance, which gives you a data set, an overall data set of your network is, are your pedestrians getting through the crosswalk in enough of a timely fashion to safely travel through, whether they be vulnerable users or, uh, or have um, handicapped issues or, or, or blind or whatever it may be, we can, we can assist and you can, as, as a traffic engineer or city engineer, you can speak to the citizens saying that you've implemented technologies that are pinpointing areas where pedestrians are not complying and not getting through uh, the crosswalks in a timely enough fashion. So very, very helpful. Another thing that we've built on the complete st uh, street standpoint is red light running, where we give you guys a full view of how many vehicles are actually running uh, reds and when they're late into the amber, um, allowing you to understand you know, maybe you do need to place some more enforcement in locations that you're seeing a high density of red light running. It also allows you for you to have kind of a, a full view of the intersection itself to start rethinking potential design solutions around the intersection, um, curb alignment, speed, um, speed reductions, uh, holding the amber longer, holding the, um, holding the green longer, retiming, all of that data set, data sets allow you to make, um, better decisions at the actual intersection or at the corridor or network. Just to kind of trigger back to the traffic classifications, better planning with counts and classification of vehicle types. Um, in, in a world of MyoVision where, call it Detroit, for example, one of our largest customer bases in, in the Northeast, um, they have you know 460 of our locations deployed, 250 of those locations have the video system and, and uh, detection system built in. We've actually worked with a company called, um, or with the MPO called SEMCOG to actually extract traffic counts from the MyoVision platform. SEMCOG made a very great uh, point that, you know, this is only valuable if these counts integrate directly into MS2, uh, a platform in which um, the MPO within Detroit is leveraging. So now MyoVision has built that ability to take our, our classification counts and inject them directly into the MS2 platform. So that is just an example of cross-departmental, how we're leveraging an MPO within a city network. Um, and then we could talk about obviously the Department of Transportation wanting visibility into conjoining intersections with the DOT network and the city of Detroit's network. 
we found some fantastic wins working with MDOT as well um, to have that cross-departmental flow to understand what those intersections off the interstates in Detroit need to be timed appropriately to, to mesh with the city of Detroit's intersections. So again, just a great example. Um, and another you know, simplistic point here is the city of Detroit, you know, technically once we're, once we're at full deployment, we'll never have to outsource a traffic count again. Um, again, a huge advantage, one solution serving multiple, uh, multiple agencies and, and needs. So that kind of classifies or, or breaks out the, the value of being able to classify counts and the value of being able to count uh, just in general, continuous traffic counts. Some of the future potential um, within a smart city platform that paves the way for advanced use cases such as detect parking violations, safety hazards, traffic incidents, and more. This is, um, again, the power of innovation and, and within our MyoVision labs, how we actually are thinking about the future. Some of the things that we're thinking about, obviously, um, our V2X connected vehicle. We're, we're, we're getting lots and lots of traction on the V2X world within the Michigan area, especially. Um, vehicle, our, our, our detection device sees a person at a corner, he's crossing, he shouldn't be crossing, can that message hit the car to notify them that a person is there? We are in the works of, of, um, of doing that body of work in the city of Detroit. Um, in regards to parking violations and, and vehicles that are, that are kind of within an area for too long, another thing we're thinking through, if that object shouldn't be in that traced area, a notification should go to a user to identify, hey, this, this person should not be here or this vehicle should not be here. Um, safety hazards or safety analytics, that, that's really our ability to identify where near misses have happened within an intersection. Again, I just wanna call out, this is all work that is in progress. Um, if you think about what the next development is for MyoVision, it's the ability to drive optimization software telling a user when to trigger a change or how to trigger a change. Also identifying where the most dangerous parts of your network are happening. What corner, where are the near misses occurring? Again, this is a big future development for MyoVision and stay tuned. I think that's, you're gonna see more and more come out of us um, within the year. So yeah, very exciting. I just wanted to quickly call out uh, data aggregation and gaps in communication. Um, so the smart link device, again, independent of the camera and the smart sense, the smart link can read data from any existing controller and cabinet device, and it transforms that into meaningful insights with no upgrades required. So again, this device, independent of everything else, can plug and play into your intersection communications. It can extract cabinet help and monitoring and give you text message alerts or alerts to a user. Some cities outsource to electrical contractors to maintain their network. We can add those users onto the platform and you can actually hold those contractors um, accountable. You can, you can put some accountability on them and understand how fast they are reacting to issues in your network. Vice versa, your own staff can access that platform. Um, we remotely access cabinet devices like an MMU, like a backup battery, like a, um, any, anything coming out of that cabinet we can plug into. This is because we have four ethernet, four serial, multiple options to plug and play. Um, and again, we can extract high res data on maybe a controller that isn't, doesn't have that ability or where you don't have comps. High res data, super important for the V2X world. Um, and again, we can extract that from, from a legacy system in the need. Travel time devices as well built in, GPS time sync built in as well, keeping everything up to speed. Um, just want to call out some of those third-party uh, integrations that we've been successful with. Um, and we already talked about all the CMSs and, and the, the controller functionality, but yeah, we can plug into a UPS battery, a CMU, um, any preemption and many more. Some of the um, capabilities that we're talking about now um, that, that we're looking to launch are actually overlaying the ability to do some preemption. Um, plugging and playing a preemption application on this device to allow for preemption in the network. So yeah, array of things, lots of things. I don't wanna get into too much on this call, but again, more than happy to, to engage anyone on the call in, in, a, in, a, in a live demo environment and really showcase some of uh, 
our successes across uh, your area. Just to kind of um, wrap up here, guys, I, I do just want to highlight our integration capabilities and multiple solutions from the one platform. So again, it all starts with you know, transportation system management, detection and sensing, uh, and data driven traffic operations and then to future applications so the basis of any kind of network or smart network is to enable communications um, we can do that we can also enable vehicle detections and we can also log everything that's coming off the intersection and serve it or or network or corridor multiple views and serve it up in a very easy to use fashion um, again the v2i world is where we're going next we're also going to the other places in which I told you about. Um, transit signal priority and EVP is again somewhere where we're going. We've also integrated with multiple adaptive control technologies in the market. Um, the ability, our ability to capture pedestrians and bicycles um, and, um, and platoons of those people in, in parking lots or during you know, events is critical for adaptive systems to work efficiently. The other big value on adaptive systems is our ability to indefinitely store data sets. So once you deploy an adaptive system, are you tracking it efficiently? Are you monitoring the efficiencies of your detection system or of your adaptive system? We can do, throw, do so through our very easy to use signal performance measure um, platform. Again, this is a ruggedized switch and it, we've, it's been called that. It's also been called a device gateway. It allows you to plug in other devices and get access to them where you don't have comms or where you just want to extract data sets. We allow for that. Um, we're going to soon activate our ability to do, we, we are piloting it, it is being successful. Again, MyoVision prides itself on being product ready when we release something. So when it comes to pedestrian detection um, at the corner or extending the crosswalk um, ped head signal when they're getting stuck in the middle of the crosswalk. That's what we're thinking about launching as kind of a next to feature, um, as well as identifying bike lanes uh, within your network and actually hitting um, the detection and activation, activating detection when a bike lane is waiting in that bike lane. And let's say they're the only um, um, object that is present at the intersection. We can object, we can identify it and activate it. Uh, but again, those are feature sets coming out later in the year. Really excited. The one thing I, I didn't necessarily get into um, get into the guts of is how MyoVision actually goes in and configures your intersection and designs your intersection when you activate a pilot with us. Um, we really pride ourselves on the pilot experience. We follow a very easy to follow, you know, 60 to 90 day process where, we're, where we have multiple checkpoints um, we also leverage this, um, this very nice and easy to use detection validation method out of Florida Department of Transportation called Terrell, which actually gives you an accuracy percentage of how well our detection is working in your network. Um, we've seen on average 97 to 99% accuracy. But again, the proof is in the pudding. If you activate a pilot with MyoVision, we will um, provide you guys with that very easy to, easy to understand Terrell report in which you have now the confidence to share that with your executive team or other stakeholders to identify, hey, MyoVision did the job, validated accuracy, it's working, and we can constantly track um, the accuracy of this system. So I just wanted to call that out there. We're, we're really good at working with our customers and working alongside Pathmaster, Pathmaster to um, not only provide a very good environment and experience within a pilot, but also assets uh, out of the pilot that you can actually look. Um, these are you know, great, great examples. They're concrete examples that you can actually share internally. Um, so yeah, that's, that was it, everyone. Um, and again, I just wanted to call out kind of who from MyoVision is, um, is willing to engage in a conversation and a demo um, and, and, and go a little bit in further detail. Start with myself. Um, I'm actually going to be covering the Ohio uh, area for MyoVision on behalf of MyoVision and Pathmaster. You can see my email there. Um, feel free to jot it down and reach out to me if you have any questions or, or next steps. Uh, same for Carl Putty. 
Uh, Carl Putty works in the Western Pennsylvania area alongside Pathmaster, uh, as well as Ian Davis in West Virginia, Kentucky, working with Myovision. The three of us have a, a wide breadth of knowledge of, of the network, uh, of the industry, sorry, in the marketplace. Um, and we've all been with Myovision for you know quite some time, so we're very familiar. And this all wouldn't be possible without you know, our ability to leverage a, a distribution partner called Pathmaster. We're extremely privileged to be able to work with Pathmaster. Um, they have a massive um, team excited to work with Myovision, our boots on the ground and our ability and to have them, you know, with parts, the product, ability to go see a customer. Um, we're very happy working with Pathmaster and, and Heidi Jacko leads their, their marketing team over at Pathmaster. Thank you very much, Heidi, for, for coordinating the meeting today. Um, and thank you everyone else. That, that's it for now. Thank you.